Hello there uh, for the latest westerners.org uh, video discussing the uh, Song of Wind and Fire series. As you can see, this is not the usual location. We yep. are vacationing. Yep, outside of uh, Sundsvall in the, well, most people call it the north of Sweden, but it's actually quite in the middle of Sweden. So this is where we have a lovely vacation home for the summer, and we've been here for a few weeks, and we thought we'd get back to some work. Yeah, so um, this is the third prophecy video, the one that we thought we were filming the last time, and then I realized that's where I was done, but it was not the one we intended to film. Uh, this is, as we said after the first one, it was quite an early prophecy, and, and now we it clicked for me, and I realized that the last prophecy I want to deal with is almost the first prophecy in, in the whole of the series. Yes, and for a long while, people weren't really sure that, well, there was a lot of debate, was it a prophecy or, or not? Yeah. Really, because uh, this is, we're talking about uh, Mirror Master's pronunciation. Um, after um, Danny has found the, uh, the vegetative Drogo, basically, who's not, uh, he's alive, but he's not really, doesn't really have a mind any longer. And she asks when he'll be as he was. Yeah, so, um, and here's Mary's answer. When the sun rises in the west and sets in the east, when the seas go dry and mountains blow in the wind like leaves, when your womb quickens again and you bear a living child, then he will return and not before. Uh, and as has said in the past, this was one of the people, uh, yeah, I even, I think, kind of held, I don't yeah. think it's really prophetic. No. It's it's more of a, a list of impossibilities. Yeah. Um, I don't know that Mary Master intended it to be prophetic. I think that she may have unknowingly because of the magical circumstances and the magic that surrounds Danny ended up setting a condition for something. We don't quite know what that condition is because I don't think, well, I don't expect Drogo to suddenly um, get off his pyre and recover. But um, some she set a condition for something to happen and I think in um, A Dance of Dragons, we start seeing these things happening. Yeah, so um, when the sun rises in the west and sets in the east, and now that one, some very clever people noticed yeah. in A Dance of Dragons. Um, Dorne enters actually the story in the Feast for Crows, where it seems, in a way, it's rising. It's rising against the Iron Throne, against yeah. the Lannisters more specifically. Yeah. Um, not an open rebellion, not mm. this time. But um, there are forces at work. Both Ariane Martel's first tries her plot, plot yeah. only to discover that her father has already been plotting for the last yeah. 17 years. Um, so, so, yeah. and the, so, obviously, the, so in the West, the sun is rising. In the, the sun referring, of course, to the, the Martel symbol of the sun and the spear. And then it sets in the East, and a dance of dragons perhaps provides that because we yeah. have. The sun's son uh, in uh, Quaithe's prophecy, that, that's Quentin Martell, comes to the east, yeah. attempts to woo da Daenerys, fails at that, refusing to accept failure, not wanting to go home a failure, he tries to, to steal, steal a dragon. To steal two dragons, actually, but yeah. yeah does poor, not, poor Quentin. Poor Quentin. Yeah. Poor Quentin. Yeah. Well, he dies a horrible, lingering death, but in a certain sense. Yeah. You could see it as the sun setting in the east yeah. in a very metaphorical yeah. sense. I, uh, the attempt that was yeah. made, the, the plans that were being made essentially, at least that part of the plan, falls with him dying. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that particular attempt to uh, to rise against the Iron Throne yeah. is obviously concluded with his death. Yeah. Um, and then the next part of it when the seas go dry and mountains blow in the wind like leaves. And again, Dance of Dragons seems to provide us the answers yeah. to be possibly. I mean, I, I'm still not yes, sold not. entirely, so it, but it, it's interesting that these things show up because yeah, obviously up, the sea going dry. It's the Dothraki Sea, as we see when Danny flies over it and later when she's wandering through the Dothraki Sea, the grasses are brown and dying. The seas are going dry. Again, very metaphorical. The dragon, yeah. the fracky sea is nothing of the ocean. No. It's it's a vast prairie yeah. or steppe. Um, it's going dry. Seems metaphorically kind of fits. Yeah. Uh, and the mountains blowing the wind like leaves. I think uh, yeah. this is the 
pyramids. So it pyramid. ties back again to Quentin's uh, failed attempt at stealing the two dragons because they get out and wreak some havoc in Marine. Yeah, and there's two pyra- uh, one of the lesser pyramids, yeah. not the bigger pyramids. One Flaming of the, one of the pyramids until it collapses. And yeah, until ashes and, and smoke in the air. Yeah. With the ash and smoke blowing in the wind, I mean, and these are... The one thing I haven't thought to check on, I probably should have, is is whether the the pyramids have been associated with mountains at any point. Yeah. Because if, if they had explicitly someone connected them to mountains, that would have made it a stronger case. I I will have to look at look this up. Yeah. Um, let's see if I can find that one. Uh, it's an interesting bit, certainly. Um, let's see. But certainly, even so, their shape and their size and. Uh, that they shouldn't be blowing in the wind. Yeah, no, um... Let me see here. I'm looking up Pyramid. Um, one of the things that I've always... Obviously, it's a topic that some people have is how does prophecy fit into the setting? Like, yeah. for one thing, why is it always so unclear? Why is it always so metaphorical? Even when you have, you, you have the visions where their visions, like Melisandre has visions. Yeah. She sees things, but never really clear. Sometimes they're quite symbolic. She sees the yeah. the, the skulls. And other times they're quite literal, but they're unclear. Like she saw Renly smashing Stannis' forces yeah. beneath the walls of King's Landing. And in fact, that's Renly's ghost. Yeah. Um, so sometimes it's just visions and you kind of try to interpret what you see. And sometimes yeah. it seems to be much more symbolic. Uh, are we to take Mary Mazister's prophecy as a actual, a moment of a magical force putting that into yeah. her head, an actual prophetic utterance, yeah. even if she's not aware of it? Or is this, in fact, more of George, potentially more playing around with the idea of, of this just mm. absurd coincidence having some meaning? Oh, well, I think that we, we probably have to attribute some of it to writing in general and that there has to be a um, a mystery to it and and I think that in general if you look at the tradition of prophecy through um, any mythology or history it is that they are likely to be misinterpreted yeah just look at the Greek tradition of all you know the oracles giving you pronunciations and then you attempt to avoid them and it never works and it's always because it's a little unclear and uh, um, so I, I think some of it is just the tradition of how prophecies are supposed to be done but when it comes to Mira Master, I, I personally like the idea that she didn't know she was making a prophecy it was uh, the magic of the moment turned her words into a prophecy um, because it seems clear that one of the reasons, or the primary reason, that the Undying wanted a hold of Danny was as a magical battery of sort. Um, she is um, something of a nexus for magic, I think. So it's not strange if uh, a pronunciation that is just meant to say, basically, this is impossible, it's not happening, turns into a prophecy around her. Yeah, I, I could certainly see that. It's yeah. it's. And then there's the whole question, of course, of prophecy, um, in which does it show you things that are set in stone? Because Melisandre is sometimes, argue, I mean, what, we, what it seems to be the case with Melisandre is she argues that they're unclear. Some of them are possible futures. Are possible things yeah. that may happen. And yet every example that we have, yeah. it has actually yeah. happened. And the possible seem to be more about she interprets them as possibilities, but in fact, they happen in ways that she doesn't expect. No, I, I think possibly that's a little bit of the, you know, magician hedging her bets, so to speak. She doesn't want to say that, oh no, this is absolutely infallible, because she knows that humans who interpret prophecy are fallible. Uh, oh, oh, and she uses this to her advantage at times. For example, it seems quite clear when she prophesizes, or when she tells Stannis, if you do this ritual, I will kill these kings will die, yeah. and they will prove my power. She saw her deaths, and now yeah. she went back, and she knows that these deaths are going to happen. Yes, yeah, so I don't and think so she, she doesn't affect them in any way. They're already. It's a. It's a bit of. It's just a a show to yeah. prove to to but him. Yeah. we see the whole thing about her having all these powders and things to be able to add to the sort of mystique 
um, it's clear that they know how to use these things, or she knows how to. She's learned over the many decades that she has yeah. lived um, how to put on a good show. So um, here, going back to the question of the mountains blowing, yeah. like with like, um, wisps of smoke still rose from a smoldering ruin that had been the pyramid of Hazkar. So that, that is the pyramid that was destroyed. Yeah. Um, in the thing. Um, I can't easily find out where mountains are ever associated with them. Let's let's go on to the, the final uh, part of that prophecy. When your womb quickens again and you bear a living child. Now that one, um, and it once more a death of dragons. Yes, uh, it does seem like what happens when Danny is wandering around there into the frack, you see she's eating these berries and things and she gets quite sick and then something else happens. It seems that she's once again having her period or it's a very strong yeah flow and i don't know if one wants to argue that she has actually not been having her period for all this time and that's part of the reason she thinks she's barren or if she's just going on miriam Asdur's pronunciation yeah. to basically assume that she's barren pronouncement pronouncement right. <laughs> um but um it, it's possible that some it seems to signify that something happens with her reproductive system while she's out into the fracky sea. Yeah, well, that was the, the, the berries that she ate, where she convinced herself that these were good berries that the, yeah. the fracky used. And obviously, some want to argue, but this is in fact, she's not having a period, she's having... A miscarriage. What, uh, some was, some a, a miscarriage is one yes. possibility, but she was already pregnant, when obviously by Dario would yeah. have been the idea. I would say, if not, it's the... It's the the pale mare, it's the, yeah. the bloody flux. Yeah. I, I, I mean, the bloody flux, uh, to just to get a little clinical is it uh, is is a bloody sort of diarrhea, diarrhea. i think she can, she tell, can the tell the difference <laughs> even in her adult state i mean it's yes. it's her moon flow um her illness is just her her eating stuff that she shouldn't have eaten yes um toxic berries of course various toxic things in reality have been known yeah. i mean moon tea is made using penny royal oh, and tansy yeah. these are things that were actually used as uh, abortifacients yeah. that would basically um, speed up your more more calls cramping, but would lead to yeah. miscarriage or would lead to I, as I theorized in the case of, of Marjorie Tyrrell that the moon tea might have been for to help her her period along yeah. to help it go. She may have a difficult time yeah. of it, and having something that would kickstart it would be useful for yeah. her. Yeah, so it's possible I, that Danny got a, a kickstart. Maybe you know, maybe there's been something hanging around in her body since I, she had this very weird birth. I mean, she gave birth, birth to a child that apparently was, you know, dead inside and full of grave worms and... Bat wings. So and, yeah. maybe she had, you know, yeah, stuff hanging around. I mean, technically, yes, that should probably have killed her. You know, she'd yeah. gone into sepsis, but Danny is magical. There's She's not... Your average person. I don't know if I would argue that she is magic, but she's uh, she's not your average person. Yeah. She doesn't has a lot. She the magic. Yeah. There's something in her, I guess in her blood. Yeah. The, the, I believe that the Garians and Valyrians had something. You know, they had a affinity of magic. I don't think yeah. there's anyone like with the Stark children. I don't think just anyone can learn to be a skin changer. I don't think anyone no. can just happen to be green seer. No. I don't think anyone can just be a faceless man. I think these things require an innate I mean, ability. Just like she can, you know. In that one special case, walk into a fire and, and come out alive. Perhaps it's possible that if there was some residue left from her magically terminated pregnancy. Yeah. So if she we was, suppose that her that womb has now, her womb well, I mean, yeah, quickening is means, means actually, means but, carrying a child. But that it's possible, no, possible for her to carry yeah. a child again. And then, and you bear a living child. Then he'll return not before. I, I mean, to me, I think relatively recently you may have already said this to me yeah. if she has a child and she names him drogo yeah. in a sense drogo has returned it's not again yeah. it's not literal it's not going to be drogo's soul no we you know, haven't really played with the topic of reincarnation so far but there who knows i mean azora high reborn and are, are yeah. talking of reincarnation there I, and the other thing of course then then that puts into my mind um one of the visions from the House of Yen Dying yeah. of the warrior with the fiery stallion banner. Yeah. Now, long ago, Linda and I were convinced, we're absolutely convinced, because yeah. we knew the arms of one Agor Rivers, yeah. aka Bittersteel. Uh, and for a time, those arms were. No, actually, no, they are now that, right? 
Well, they are a winged stallion. Oh, yeah. Stored in fire. Stored in fire. fire. Stallion, yeah. and, but we had thought originally when we found out that he was a, a bastard of a, a Bracken and a Targaryen that we were going to end up with a descendant of his of in the Golden Company carrying a banner of a fiery stallion. Uh, but now, I mean, I've always been saying that why should one of those visions be untrue? Yeah. When everything else is, is a natural path. Well, now I'm thinking that it is So true. now I'm thinking that Danny's going to have a half Dothraki child. Oh my gosh. And of course, where does she end up at the end of A Death of Dragons? Among the Dothraki, yeah. apparently. Wow. Well. So very. There, there's yeah. our, our, this is our speculation for the far future of yeah. a setting. But Danny will help carry. will uh, make an agreement with the call. Yeah. Probably. Uh, Jacko, I think. Yeah. Um, and carry his child. Alternatively, they were saying that you will ha- you will be the father of the yeah. family that mounts the world. Alternatively, if um, flies. yes, we get little flies and little mosquitoes bothering us from the recording things. But hey, vacation. Um, but I think if she perhaps wants to get rid of him, um, whoever she sets up as his successor, yeah, could perhaps could so. very well be. Who she picks to be the... Yeah. Well, it's not Mago, I'm going to guess. No. Because I mean, she prompts all of them with die screaming. So. Yes, well, if she kills... But the successor The Carl and yeah. his blood riders and sets up somebody else. Such as one of her own blood riders who are now presently looking for her in the direction of Dracky Sea. And well, decides to... Possibly we've, we've figured out, or at least have a speculation yes. as to where the story is going. <laughs> but in well, any case... By the way, we would actually see that because that child is shown as grown... Or a young man, anyway. No. And I, I think that would be a suggestion to something that would ha- be happening after, well after, down the after, line. Yeah, after yeah. something with the fire yeah. is done. But I think there would be a the thing to come. The world. Hint of things to come. Yeah. So um, that's our views on, on those particular yeah. prophecies. Um, I think we've now covered all the major, really significant stuff so far through the series, yeah. and I think we don't need we don't need to touch anymore. But. Um, It'll be interesting to see how it goes, because I, I... The whole question of prophecy started an argument on the forum, and I think... Uh, I think we may have had a discussion with Shanti Collins over at All Ever Must Be Boiled a, a bit about prophecy and, like, you know, f- where's free will? You know, is it all yeah. predestined? And, and my view is, yes, when you see these prophecies, they're... They are predestined. But... I think the analogy I gave is you're on a train and you know that train is going to stop at, you know, point B. But whether you get there by stopping in a dining car and having a meal or sleeping through the whole trip, that's up to you. To a certain degree, what you do when you're on this inevitable journey is it says something about you as a person. You're not just... so. It may possibly also be one of those where... Prophecies are eventually going to fulfill themselves in some fashion, even if the first option doesn't happen. Um, I think that has been discussed in the context of Lord of the Rings that Frodo could have refused yeah. to take the ring, and for a time perhaps Sauron could have prevailed, but ultimately, when there is a destiny, some at some point it will find the right time and place and person to be yeah. fulfilled. And obviously this is this time with the comet and all these prophecies really around it. Yeah. The uh, Stark children suddenly manifesting, yeah. skin changing after... I mean, they're the first Stark skin changes we know of. Yeah. Ever. I mean, maybe there were others, but these are the first we ever heard of. Yeah. Um, it's certainly a time, a key point in time in yeah. the, the uh, magical history of, yeah. of the setting. It's sort of a confluence of powers yeah. and... So, okay, that wraps yeah. up this video. Thank you very much for more and putting up with our, not having our stack of books <laughs> and our, you know, Lannister box and so on. Um, have a good day. Yeah, bye.